We're looking at the mechanism of breathing and what that actually means is how you take air in and how you get air out, otherwise known as ventilation. Ventilation is powered by muscles, three main muscles. You've got your internal intercostal muscles, your external intercostal muscles and your diaphragm. Thinking first about the intercostal muscles, these are the meaty bits that you find between the ribs. When you go and have barbecued ribs at the restaurant, that's what you're actually eating. You're eating the animal's muscles that enabled it to live in the first place. So you get internal ones and you get external ones. Now, really, wouldn't it be nice if internal intercostals dealt with inhaling? That would be a really nice way to remember it. And if external if they dealt with exhaling however they don't it's the other way around so internal intercostal muscles deal with exhaling and external intercostal muscles deal with inhaling then of course we've got the diaphragm and when we spell that word don't forget the g it's spelled Okay, don't forget that G. So the diaphragm is a sheet of muscle that lies right across the base of your thorax. Okay, so your thorax is your chest region, your abdomen is your stomach region, and it, it's, a, it's a sheet of muscle that lies straight across there. So let's first of all think about inhaling. I'm going to represent the thorax, the thoracic region, as a kind of bell jar. So this would be my diaphragm and in here would be my external intercostal muscles. So when you inhale, your diaphragm, which is now a dome shape, contracts. When muscles contract, they shorten. So what actually happens is this dome shape now takes this shape and your external intercostal, intercostal muscles, which are in here between your ribs, they're also going to contract and that lifts the rib cage up and out. So now your thoracic region occupies more space, but it's got the same amount of particles in there that there was a second ago. And so <clears throat> if you increase the volume, but the number of particles stay the same, then the pressure drops, okay? Now what does it drop compared to? It drops compared to the atmospheric pressure on the outside. So always, Air wants to be equal. It wants to, if you have some uh, food, perhaps Pringles or something, and they're vacuum packed, when you open it, you hear that little rush of air. It wants to equalize. So in order to equalize, what happens is, and again, if this is your um, trachea on the way down, air rushes in to equalize that pressure. Now, like so many muscle types in the body, uh, muscles can only uh, pull they can only contract, they can't go the other way. And so they are antagonistic. And that is true with the external intercostal muscles. Uh, they work with the internal. And so as the external intercostal muscles contract, the internal ones relax. So let's get a little flow chart of where we are so far. And then of course the reverse is true. When we want to exhale, when we want to get rid of that spent air, what we're gonna do is the complete opposite. 
the internal intercostal muscles are going to contract, which means that the external intercostal muscles are going to relax. The diaphragm is also going to relax and all of those changes are going to make the rib cage move down and in and the diaphragm going back to its dome shape decreases the volume of the thorax. And because of that, what's going to happen is now the pressure is too high in here. It's higher in here compared to the atmospheric pressure on the outside. So to equalise, air is going to rush out and that whole process is ventilation. But again, let's get a flow chart down. Okay, so we've got the internal intercostal muscles contract, the external ones relax, ribcage moves down and in, the diaphragm relaxes and forms a dome shape, so it goes from flat to a dome shape. And all of that makes the whole volume of the thorax decrease, but you've still got the same amount of air in there. So all of a sudden, the pressure of that air is increased, so therefore, air rushes out to equalise that pressure. So during normal breathing, we're not really forcibly using our diaphragm that much. We're not using more muscles around our rib cage. It's just the elastic recoil of the elastic fibres around our alveoli that makes them empty. However, when you're running or doing strenuous activity, your diaphragm will contract more to increase the volume a lot more so that you will exchange more air on each breath and it will also force air out as well. So, do you really know this topic? Can you construct the flow chart by yourself, both for inhalation and exhalation? Can you um, interpret some graphs of data of the pressure of the volume changes that might take place in the lungs.